his game is versus Wicked Cossack, and we'll, we'll read what he uh, read what he said. Dude, I have another replay for you. I played this game on EP versus Wicked Cossack the other day. He has a few questions about it. He feels like I felt like he was certainly the stronger player. That aside, what can I do to become better? He'd like general general gameplay tips, but more specifically, what can he do given the current situation that he was in? He felt like he was able to hold the pressure, but never push out or continue to grow his economy. What can he do to try and win this game? All right, so that's the thing that we will be taking into uh, consideration. But uh, here we go. Uh, Duracon playing. It looks like it's Hudson Bay. Uh, indeed, it is Hudson Bay. And he's playing the British Civilization, uh, and his opponent is Wicked Cossack, who uh, was a fairly good player uh, at some point, was even like PR35, so uh, in case you didn't know who we were playing against, he definitely a decayed player. Uh, but he's going to be playing the Portuguese, it looks like, so. Duracon's over here, he's playing Brits, and it's a coin start, uh, everything looking uh, pretty good so far. And we'll just speed it up through some of this uh, kind of boilerplate stuff. Um, it also looks like it's going a little bit in slow mode. <laughs> just because uh, I think, it, I don't know, sometimes that just happens. Huh? But uh, maybe if I turn down the options here a little bit. Turn off V-Sync. Turn that down a little bit, see if it speeds it up a little bit. There, it looks a little, like it's going a little bit. There we go, it's going normal speed, at least it's more regular. So that's okay. Uh, but, uh, okay, so hold on. What what treasure is this? So that's a 60 wood treasure. So I'm going to start here because uh, we saw in, in the SmackDown games we just, just watched how important Explorer HP can be. And sure, three wolves isn't super trivial to take, but... Uh, you could definitely clean this up a little bit. Losing, a, you know, 250 HP on your Explorer at one minute of the game, like that's that that's something that you can clean up easily just by kiting this a little better. 60 wood certainly is a good treasure, definitely worth it. Not saying you shouldn't take that treasure, but uh, there's definitely a way to take that treasure without losing 250 hit points on your Explorer as well. So that's one thing. Uh, also, uh, I, I want to go over what your, what your start here is because it looks like you're just doing, uh, looks like you, you didn't decide to gather, uh, let's see what you got for treasures. Okay, so you didn't get a coin treasure or anything like that. Um, personally, I would drop down a market here and probably just uh, go with uh, the house and hunting dogs early in this game. That's uh, a personal choice. Uh, you did get 60 wood, so it ended up being okay because you're going to get two houses out of it anyways. Uh, don't gather the 60 coin unless you're gathering uh, all of it and going to use it. Uh, the, I, I personally think I would have gone market, uh, gathered the extra resources to get hunting dogs and be able to buy uh, 100 wood to be, be able to make a market. And uh, I think that's what I would have done in this situation. But uh, that's not the biggest thing. It's just a maybe a preference if, if nothing else personal preference your herding has been good so far yeah, I like your uh, how you decided to herd here early in the game uh, was this hunt gonna run out yes that hunt was going to run out gonna have to make uh, maybe one more uh, you could have maybe started herding a little bit earlier so that your hunts got a little bit closer looks like you got a little bit boned maybe with this one moose being that far away and that kind of stuff happens you know sometimes there's not a lot you can do about it but I'd have to go back and watch that. Nothing like too big. It's not like anything groundbreakingly different uh, or needs to be done at this point. There comes the market. Should definitely gather up this remaining 40 coins so that you can use it at some point. Aging up with the outpost, I would assume. There it is. Okay. And 700 wood. Everything looking fairly normal for Brits here. I like your build. Uh, you, it looks like you've got this calculated. Well. This looks like a calculated build, right? So so often we'll see players like not calculate their wood out, and it just feels awkward. This this feels calculated to me, right? 139 is a fairly specific number in in the fact that it's very close to the amount needed specifically for steel traps. So I don't know that not having a military building building this early is good, but I at least like that you're committing to like a, what feels like a, a calculated build, even if it's not a build that I would necessarily say that is maybe the best in the world. 
Uh, okay, let's stop here because now now we have some decisions to make, right? Indeed, we do have steel traps in queue, which is good. Uh, should definitely have that in queue. Should be definitely gathering up this coin. There's no reason to let it sit this long. Uh, well, I guess there is a reason specifically to let it sit this long, and that's the fact that you don't have a military building. Uh, we'll touch on that in a moment. This outpost wagon, I'm not a big fan of this position, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, this map is pretty good for Portuguese, and there's a chance, not a guarantee, but a chance that he's going to go water uh, on this map. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, unfortunately for you, like I mean, I'm playing with fog of war. I'm I'm on your side. I'm trying to think of things from your side. So we don't know this is here, right? <coughs> but should he be playing Portuguese and it's a water map, I would like to see the outpost up here uh, somewhere, either in like this location, gathering this, from this coin mine and, and helping to deny his coast, or maybe up here securing this hunt uh, and helping to secure the water. Either way, I'd like to see. Uh, the outpost trying to help secure the water on this map a little bit, but I do at least like the fact that you're putting it on top of a hunt. So often you'll see people put it just like in a random no-brainer spot. So at least this is helping to secure a hunt, but it still feels a bit extended with no purpose, right? So uh, maybe up here I think would be like one spot that I'd like to see it, or right back here a little bit further if you want to uh, play a little bit more defensively. Uh, that outpost is very good at helping defend the water. Uh, maybe get a little bit unlucky uh, due to the fact that like he's going to be playing pretty aggressive here, but uh, we'll see. Uh, you're, you're, you still have no military building, which is going to be slightly problematic here. So one comment that you had in your early game is that how do you deal with the pressure, right? How, how are you going to deal with the pressure? And I can already see you know, an issue starting to formulate here. It's five minutes. You aged up. 20 or 30 seconds ago with a 17 pop age up, which is perfectly good for Brits. He had very little idle time, stuff like that. It's really good. But at the same time, you you didn't make a military building, right? You you had this calculated build, which I said was okay, but now you're just sitting here stockpiling resources. You have steel traps researching, which is good. And I assume you're going to make some sort of military building out of the 700 wood, whether it's a stable or a barracks or whatever. But at the same time, uh, everything feels a little bit slow here. And, I mean, you don't know this because you haven't scouted it. <coughs> but he's got two raxes right outside your base, right? And so this kind of pressure is going to be very hard to deal with without making uh, a military structure off of uh, the starting resources. Now, Brit, of course, is a civilization that doesn't have Quartermaster as an option. And so you need to uh, do one of two things. You either use crates uh, that you ship from your home city to build structures, which is what it looks like you're going to do, or you need to gather the resources uh, and build the structure to start with. What I would have done in this situation, if I were you, is I would have chopped the resources, gathered the resources, chopped the trees to be able to build a barracks or a stable, depending on which kind of style you want to play. I think both have their merits going both barracks early uh, and stable early. And then I would have built an additional structure with the 700 wood when it came. Either the, the corresponding building, or if you wanted to go dual racks, you could drop down a second racks or something like that. But certainly this is going to feel like it's going to be really late. And if he does like some sort of strong <coughs> excuse me, dual racks musket rush, uh, you could, you're, you're going to run into a lot of trouble here. Um, and we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. Here comes your 700 wood. Uh, you should have villagers immediately, like... The second this arrives, you should be able. You should be immediately gathering it. Uh, I don't know if you know this, or maybe there's people who don't know this in general. But the wood will always pop out um, where your home city gather flag is. So you can uh, you can control which side the wood's gonna tr drop out on. And like I would have just dropped it out right over here on this coin mine and just put these two villagers like immediately to it. Would have been a lot closer. So if you can immediately gather that, uh, especially if you're going with the slower delayed build. Uh, maybe almost like a Japanese style build. Uh, at least you would know what it. Do scout these out. That's important. <coughs> you know exactly what he's doing. Dual racks. Let's see whether or not you get any knowledge of what I, what's even coming. So you even have the you have the knowledge of knowing exactly what's coming. Um, dropping down to barracks. Good. Look at your resources. Starting to stockpile a little bit. Uh, definitely should be dropping. Uh, a second barracks off the back of this as well. And, and I would even argue six long, but probably needs to be your next card as well. Just because you know he's got two racks, he's building a ton of muskets. Uh, there comes the second racks. Good. 
Uh, you've you've well overgathered at coin. You can pull all of your villagers off coin except for like one at this point. Uh, you've got enough coin to make you know twenty plus muskets at this point. You don't need to gather any more coin. Um, if five vil comes here, okay, six longbow. I think that's even. I think that's the right play. I think that's absolutely correct, especially when you see this many muskets being sent. I think that's absolutely correct. Notice the tower didn't really do anything. Arguably, it maybe wouldn't have done anything up here either, but uh, that's fine. Here comes your uh, uh, your muskets. All right, let's <coughs> let's pause here again. Uh, against pressure. Uh, having defended resources is one of the most important things. And you did a good job of hurting early in the game, but now look at where your hurting has slipped out to, right? Uh, you've got two hunts that I would argue are in a fairly safe position, maybe three if you count this one. These guys are really starting to slip back out. They're not super safe. These guys are in a really awkward position, right? They're like three moose kind of wedged behind... Uh, the market. It's going to be really hard to get these guys like back behind the market and up close to the town center. And I feel like at some point he's just going to come in here, start challenging your resources, and you're just going to crumble underneath that kind of pressure. Oh, you're pop capped even. Uh, okay, you're building a house there. Heard, heard, heard. Okay, here come the muskets. Alright, so decisions need to be made here, right? I mean, you have units close to coming out. He's got about 20 units here. This looks about like 20. It's, it's going to be a maximum of 20, right? I mean, if we pop over to his side, uh, it's going to be 20 or less. It's 18. Specifically why you know it's going to be 20 or less is because he's got two raxes. He probably hasn't shipped six muskets, and so the most that it's likely going to be is going to be about 20 because it's going to be two batches worth. Uh, and so if you could do that calculation, I mean, you're, you're going to have 10 plus 6 longbows. You're very soon going to have the uh, what you need to be able to uh, beat this army uh, with Minutemen here as well. So let's see how you deal with this pressure, because this is going to be the first uh, little bit of pressure. Uh, scout out front. You could have him back waiting to, to use him with the rest of your army. Uh, Minimum timing here is going to be pretty important. Uh, look at where your military flag is. Good. It's coming off here to the right side. That's good. You want to make sure your longbows stay safe. <coughs> Ooh. All right. So this is it's so close. This is going to be a little bit awkward. So I, I preferred the longbows popping out here to the back side, to be perfectly honest. You changed that at the last moment to be popping out here to the front side, and this is going to suck because, like, now they're just right in range of, uh, of all of these muskets, and uh, at least one of these longbows, maybe two of his micros, could, are going to immediately fall down to musket fire. There goes one. And he gets, yeah, he gets two exactly. Uh, this is, okay, Minutemen are coming. Everything's just a little bit slowly timed here. You've already lost two longbows. Uh, your muskets are kind of trickling in from the side. Where's your, where are your Minutemen going to pop out? It looks like they're going to be in the same place your Minutemen were. Uh, it's not too bad. No villagers in the town center, which would maybe be helpful here. Uh, the Minutemen weren't controlled very well immediately after coming out. But you do at least push him back. Uh, your economy's not good. Uh, got caught a little extended there. <coughs> These kinds of things, when you're dealing with pressure, have to be very, very crisp. Uh, and if they're not, you get punished as a result of it. Because th this is probably the point in the game that's going to make or break whether or not you're able to hold this pressure. Here comes 600 wood, that's fine. It's probably the right card choice. You don't want to engage here. There's no re no reason to be standing out front here. You just take a look at your army and take a look at his army. You know his army beats your, yours, like no doubt about it. You have a house building, should finish in time to at least get, you know, like six, six or seven musketeers out, I would say. Uh, it may not be finished in time to get any additional ones out of this batch, but it should almost certainly finish in time to get three more out of this batch. Uh, your army should be probably standing right now, like right down here, facing this direction. So s standing like in this kind of formation right out front, facing this direction, so that when his muskets come over here, you'll be ready to 
uh, deal with it. Uh, this is where all your villagers are gathering. Looks like you've just kind of abandoned these moose. They're never going to get in a position uh, against this kind of pressure that you're going to be able to gather from. Uh, but instead, your army's just kind of like working into this awkward position, not really in uh, in a position to be able to deal with this pressure over here. Um, and you got some decent volleys off there. But I still don't think you should be engaging until all of these units come. I mean, what are you defending out here? Nothing, really. Like, right, if he kills these three manors, like, oh well, not the end of the world. You're going to be trading off units. <coughs> it's going to be fine. You should just be waiting for uh, your more, more reinforcements to come. Uh, missed a couple units in that batch, which definitely would have helped you. You still do have a couple longbowmen here in the back, which is nice. Uh, it's adding quite a nice, quite some nice value here. Be training villagers. Get stuff in queue. Uh, I can tell you're you're like focusing on like fighting the army here though. But this is this is so important. I mean, you have resources to have one musket in queue out of each of these raxes, and they're just not. You, know, you have the resources to easily have muskets starting, and having those barracks is idle just mean that you're not going to be able to have the reinforcements you need to continue to hold his pressure. If we were to go back and look at you know his his cycle time in, in his barracks, he probably doesn't have that much downtime, and the more downtime you have, especially when you have the resources to make units, uh, the harder it's going to be. And I'm focusing on these little things because you know, this is a game where you specifically mentioned like you need to be able to hold the pressure. Uh, you ha also haven't trained villagers in a long time, which is slightly problematic. I think you're just going to run out of resources here, honestly. Some of it comes down to these moose were not herded well. That's 1,500 resources that uh, you're not going to have in the bank. <coughs> you need to have uh, you need to have villagers training, and you probably need to have a couple longbowmen training here as well. You know that he's going uh, ooh, out of position. Gonna lose two or three villagers. Yep, yeah, three mills, four. Yeah, I mean you're down at twenty-one villagers. Which, I mean, you're, you've been under pressure, so it's understandable that you're a little bit low, but you haven't trained villagers here in a long time. We'll look at the villager graph at the end, and I suspect during this time we have made very few villagers. Now, and now look at your hunts. Your hunts just, there's 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 no gatherable food, right? I mean, it's pretty awkward. <laughs> Your resource totals are really reflecting that. Got your army split out a little bit. It's not the end of the world. Longbowmen aren't adding any DPS at this point. There comes a villager. I mean, I don't even know what card you send here. I guess you probably just send like six muskets because you, you're pretty sure he's fairly all in. Uh, maybe you send five villagers. Uh, either way, though, uh, losing more villagers down to 25 villages again. Did push back the pressure. Ooh, that was important. I don't. Maybe you even saw it before because it looks like you have a couple musketeers here uh, in melee mode. So you, you know that he's making hussar, right? Like we just saw. We just saw two hussar. Portuguese does not have a three hussar shipment. You know that it was uh, the, that a stable has been built. Uh, you don't, you're not making any quantity of longbows at this point, but had you been making a few longbows in the mix, uh, now that would be your cue to stop making longbows. Five vil is fine. I think even six musket would be fine too. At this point, you're. Uh, it feels like you're a little bit, a little bit behind. I mean, you've lost quite a few villagers. You're at 10 minutes and you're only at 25 bills. Even against pressure, you would ideally be at like 35, 36, 37 bills at this point. Even if you had to have sent uh, six longbow, um, stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, at this point, you're, you're just getting ran around the map, right? Because you're, you're, you don't have any hunt. You don't have any safe place to hunt. <laughs> Run, tuck them back in the corner. Yeah, that's good. That's what I would do too. I just ram him back in that corner. He's probably just gonna come up here, see that you've left, and then abandon that. 
But this is exactly what these four cab are trying to accomplish, because he could be like aging or something behind this, right? Or uh, shipping 700, 600 wood, building trading posts, or uh, continuing to get more market upgrades. Maybe he's water booming, something like that, right? This is exactly what his Hussar are trying to accomplish, just buying him time for these two town centers to pump out more bills and, and get him further ahead. And that's exactly what it's doing. I mean, your army is not threatening his whatsoever. And as a result, uh, these cab have paid off in spades at this point in the game. It's probably just going to come down to now he, I mean, he's just ahead economically. He's going to get one big army put together here. Because, I mean, he's, he's ahead economically. You're at 27 bills. He's at 36. Uh, he's got a TP coming. There's no, there's no question who's ahead economically at this point, right? Simple mathematics will tell us that... Uh, the 36 is larger than 27. <clears throat> I, I do like this. I mean, this this is your best chance, right? I mean, shipping a, a musketeer upgrade, which is the unit that you primarily have, and then just trying to catch him with his pants down. Maybe he's aging or something like that, right? Uh, I think this is your best chance at winning the game, and at least you've, I think you've realized that, right? Uh, you're going to time and push around your musketeer attack. Uh, be looking to be attacking him right when that finishes, and that's probably going to give you your best chance to win. So I do like that. I think that's... Uh, it's a valid call at this point, but I think he's just going to have way more than you are. Especially these five Hussar. They can just soak. He's got Minutemen available from this town center. They're aware of it. But, I mean, his army's just better at this point, right? Let me go those pesky Hussar again. It's going to be tough to ever... And, I mean, even if... Even if you're able to ward off this cab pressure, he's just got so much map control on you at this point, right? With the Hussar running around... You're never going to be able to safely gather from locations like this, uh, to be perfectly honest. Ooh, the mailman's here. Just left me a package. I heard him. Uh, Alright, still being run around a little bit. I mean, your economy's catching up a little bit, but I mean, you're still falling pretty far behind. That looks like an 8 crossbow shipment to me. I doubt he's actually training crossbow. If you were training crossbow, you'd want to like consider, do I need to start making cab? But seeing that number, it's probably just eight. Here do come some longbows, which I like. I think they're maybe a little late. You're trading pretty heavily at the at the market at this point as well to try and catch up a little bit. And uh, now you're just kind of boxed up. Sar, he might even like be aging or something at this point. No, he's still not. He's still just pumping on this. Yeah. And it looks like there's just going to be one final fight, right? Oh, you found your villagers. And even if you kill his whole army here, I mean, you've lost map control, you're going to lose all these builds. And this is probably the point where you resign, right? I think most people know that they're beat at this point. Yeah, I certainly would. Uh, it doesn't <laughs> never feels good to have uh, basically your remaining food economy jammed up in a hole with five hussars hunting them down. So, all right. So let's first thing first things first. Let's look at the villager count because there was one thing that, uh, especially at, at this point in the game, that was not good, and that was while you were while you were trying to hold his pressure, you were not training villagers. So if we take a look at six twenty nine to nine minutes, that's two and a half minutes. During that two and a half minute time when he was applying pressure, uh, you did not train many villagers. You trained one. Maybe you trained like an extra one in here and you know an extra one got killed. It's fine that you're losing villagers. That happens against pressure. And we can see he sacrificed some of his economy to really apply that pressure, right? He didn't train villagers for a fairly good stretch in here as well. He was just trying to get out as many units as possible. That kind of thing happens when you're rushing, all right? That's perfectly fine. But what needs to happen here is when this pressure is over, you need to be even. You need to you need to at least be even with him in, in economy so that you can just pick up and continue your British agenda powering ahead. Um, you stayed flat in villagers from 6 minutes and 26 seconds, 28 seven seconds, to 10 minutes and 28 seconds. You're at 24 villagers and 25 villagers. Your villagers count changed to zero over the course of... Uh, four minutes and that can't happen that means two things are happening one your villagers are being sloppily controlled they're not being 
uh, put in the town center at appropriately appropriate times, you're not uh, paying attention to the low health villagers and keeping them safe, uh, you're not positioning your army in, in smart positions to be able to defend against your villagers. Uh, there was one point when you had your army just kind of like walking up over here to the left side a little bit and your whole food economy was centralized on these uh, elk down here and, and he came in and just like shot three villagers and then ran back out for pretty much free. Those kinds of things like can't happen. You need to be able to defend your villagers and what that's going to come down to is realizing where your villagers are at, where you have weaknesses, and where you need to stand your army as a result of that. Standing your army over here when your entire economy is over here doesn't really matter. I mean, even if he comes in here, starts sieging down your houses, your market, water under the bridge really doesn't matter, and to be perfectly honest with you. If you lose your market, you lose a couple of manor houses, doesn't really matter. Um, so that's the first thing I would say, is that you need to be able to keep your villagers safe. And, and that just comes with practice and, and keeping them safe. Um, that's, the fir that's the first, I think, most important fundamental thing. Uh, <coughs> other than that, I, I, I do want to highlight a couple other things that I think went uh, astray. One, your herding was kind of off point uh, in the early mid-game, so like from six minutes on. Your herding early on wasn't too bad, you were able to control your hunts pretty well, but your your hunts really got out of control, especially these these moose. These moose, you realize, were your second hunt, essentially, right? And look where they're at now. They're so far away. I mean, we can even see one of these is, has, has been shot at some point. And these moose need to die underneath your town center. This is 1,500 plus resources that you just didn't get to gather in food because uh, of poor herding. Uh, similarly, some of these elk were not very well controlled. There was multiple points where they could have been herded. Uh, they weren't against pressure. Having animals right back here in the safe pocket behind your town center is paramount to holding pressure. Uh, Portuguese is not a particularly strong uh, sieve when it comes to recovering from failed pressure, maybe like something like India is, right, or even French to some degree. Uh, Portuguese, they kind of go all in. if. If they aren't able to make their pressure work, uh, their catch-up mechanic is to train a ton of villagers out of two town centers, which is really slow, really cumbersome, and really expensive. Not a very good catch-up mechanic. They don't have villager cards. Uh, their follow-up options to get into the third age uh, and do something impactful there are not overly great either. And uh, if you can just survive the pressure, you're, you're going to be okay, especially with Brits. I mean, you're going to be able to just make manor houses and continue to power ahead. So... Heard your hunts, make sure they're nice and safe. Uh, that slipped at some point. It was probably one of the m most important things that uh, you could have improved. Um, I wasn't a big fan of your build. I do like the fact, uh, like I mentioned, that your wood calculation seemed, uh, it was a calculated build, right? You, you gathered specifically 139-ish wood so that you could get steel traps. And then it looks like you made the conscious decision to build your structures with your 700 wood. That's that's good that you had ca it calculated out, but I don't think it was really appropriate, especially in this matchup. I think Brits, like I mentioned, they're never going to have quartermaster. It's one of the one of the only weaknesses of Brits uh, early age too, not having quartermaster politician the 400 wood, and, and so as a result, I think you need to have the 200 wood going into either a stable or a barracks early on. Uh, had you had either of those structures and had units for his first 10 musketeers, his first 10 musketeers would have come out and you would have met it with either five musketeers of your own plus Minutemen or like four Hussars and Minutemen and you would have been able to push back his pressure and then even if things like your herding weren't so good you probably still would have been able to push him back, would have had some Hussars out, maybe could have raided a little bit, uh, put him on the back foot, uh, you would have more muskets. Maybe you wouldn't need to ship six longbows or something like that. Uh, it could have continued to get ahead economically in that way. Um, I think your build was just a little bit off. Uh, I would, I would tr probably try and just cookie cutter builds at this point until you get very comfortable uh, and then branch out. I don't know that I'm ever, uh, I'm ever a fan of uh, British making their first military structure. Uh, on 700 wood. I think that feels a little bit slow and uh, it's just something that they can't really afford to do. They don't have, uh, if you take a look at like other civs that can afford to do that, 
I'm going to namely say Japan, who specifically does build structures with their uh, wood shipments very, very often. The reason why Japan gets away with it is because they can, uh, you can sim city your base a lot easier. You have the Tashuga Shrine, which is huge. They can block off a large area. Uh, you have your market, your consulate, extra buildings uh, that you're going to be able to make that can uh, cover a lot of area. Plus, you get to choose precisely where your food is going to be gathered from. And that's going to be right behind your town center, a super easy to defend location. Uh, when you have hunts, especially on hunts, uh, lower hunt maps where you don't get to necessarily decide where you're going to be gathering from, uh, it just feels slow and against pressure. You might just end up getting rolled over. You don't have, uh, you don't have some of the same mechanics to defend against the pressure that Japan has. So uh, I would look to adjust your build slightly. Uh, but I do like the fact, like I mentioned, that you that you calculated out the number of resources you went and you stuck with it. You went with it. Um, other than that, one other slightly different thing that you maybe probably should have mixed in a few longbowmen a little bit earlier. Uh, you scouted the dual racks. You knew that he was only making uh, barracks units to start with. It wasn't likely for him to add in Hussar uh, very early on. He had plenty of musketeers. I would have added in a few more longbow additionally to the six longbow shipment so that you could have just uh, dealt from additional range with the musketeers a little bit. Uh, and then one final thing, uh, you did have a chance, I think, to kill his army well uh, and push it back. Uh, but I think the the positioning of your of your town center pops was just a little bit sloppy. There was that one fight where he was like right here. Your muskets were like kind of up here, jammed in these houses. Uh, your longbow popped out in an awkward spot to the front side of your town center, uh, and then your muskets were like kind of like trickling in uh, at awkward times behind that. Uh, if you can get everything to line up so that it comes out at just the right time, um, you're going to be a lot better off. Uh, longbows should have popped out either to the back or to the side, so that, I mean, they have huge range of the longbows, they're going to be able to shoot over anything. Uh, the musketeers could have waited just for a couple more seconds for the reinforcements to come, and then you could have smashed all that in uh, and, and taken that fight. And I leave that as the last thing, because that's something that's really hard to improve by, like, me just telling you, like, improve this. Like, that's something that only comes with practice and playing the game a ton and getting comfortable with... Uh, with those timings and knowing how all those things uh, end up working out and just being able to eyeball uh, how all those things are going to come uh, together at once because uh, if you were able to uh, get those things all to pop out at once uh, I think you would have uh, been slightly more successful uh, in the fight. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, I think those are uh, the most important things. Uh, certainly I mean now you're on the right track. Nothing to be ashamed of here. Um, you've got the, the the general ideas with Brit Stone pretty good. It looks like Wicked Cossack is a really good player, uh, to be honest. I mean, he was like a pure 35, 36, 37 player, something like that at one point. So knows his way around, knows how to play. Uh, lots of sieves really well, and uh, his aggression got you at this point. So hopefully that helps. Um, that's going to be it for me, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Peace out.